Glow-in-the-Dark Plants on the ISS, presented by Science at NASA. The world is changing. As greenhouse gases accumulate in the atmosphere, global temperatures are on the rise. Sea levels inch upward as polar ice retreats. Crops are growing in new places. The world is changing. The question is, can life change with it? A batch of genetically engineered plants orbiting Earth on board the International Space Station may have something to say about this. Our environment on Earth is changing, so we need to know how plants respond to novelty, says molecular biologist Anna Lisa Paul of the University of Florida. Spaceflight is outside the evolutionary experience of any terrestrial organism. Learning how plants respond to this unique environment can also tell us how plants respond to new challenges on Earth. Paul and colleague Rob Furl are principal investigators of an experiment on the ISS called TAGES, the Transgenic Arabidopsis Gene Expression System. For the past two years, they have been using an experimental growth chamber on board the space station to grow a garden of Arabidopsis thaliana, also known as thalecress. Cameras captured growth rates, root patterns, and a strange green glow. We genetically modified the plant to glow when it is under stress, explains Paul. This can tell us a lot about how Arabidopsis adapts to the microgravity environment. Learning how plants adapt to new situations is crucial to climate change research. In terms of global biomass, plants outweigh mammals by a factor of a thousand. They are a dominant part of the biosphere, playing a key role in the carbon cycle. Scientists and farmers have been experimenting with plants for centuries. Yet at a fundamental genetic level, much remains unknown. This is why Paul and Furl have been putting Arabidopsis through its paces, exposing the plant to extremes of pressure, temperature, and drought. Most of their work has been done on Earth, but some extremes can only be found in space. Removing gravity from the equation reveals unique aspects of cell growth and development that we cannot discover in any other way, says Furl. The International Space Station is a great place to do this. In a recent issue of the journal Plant Biology, they presented some of Tage's first results. We have seen some things that surprised us, reports Paul. Paul and Furl inserted a glowing reporter gene into the DNA of Arabidopsis that would be triggered by the plant hormone auxin. Auxin is important to how plants move and respond to their environment. By watching parts of Arabidopsis light up, they tracked the progress of the hormone at the cellular level without actually dissecting the plants. We expected to find auxin in the gravity-sensing cells at the tip of the roots. Instead, it showed up in the hypocotyls, the stem-like region between the roots and leaves, she says. An even bigger surprise was skewing, a pattern of root movement that, on Earth, helps plants navigate sticks and stones in soil as they search for water and nutrients. Paul recalls being with Rob Furl and watching some of the first images of Arabidopsis come down from the ISS. Are those roots skewing, we asked? The pattern was definitely there. It was pretty exciting, she says. This is something we thought only happened in gravity. Paul and Furl also observed how Arabidopsis used light as a gravity substitute for telling up from down. With lamps shining overhead, roots grew clearly away from the leaves, just like on Earth. Arabidopsis has proven remarkably adaptable to the space environment, notes Furl. The details are not yet fully understood. But thanks to TAGES, data at the cellular and genetic levels are now available for study. The more we learn, says Paul, the better partners we can be for life in a changing world. For more information about life on Earth and Earth orbit, stay tuned to science.nasa.gov.